Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Ming Zhang from Momentum Learning. Uh, today, we're going to have another webinar um, talk about USCO and um, its application to um, how it can help the college application process and also the job interview after college graduation. This is the contact information. Um, you can send email to uh, this address or call the number here, or you can connect, uh, contact uh, Ted, Mr. Tsai, using the um, this logo here, or uh, this um, WeChat image. All right, okay, let's get it started. We had talked about how we can prepare for USCO uh, about a month ago, four weeks ago, and this is the second in our series. Uh, we would, uh, have another series, uh, another uh, webinar, hopefully would be in November, talking about how do we prepare uh, for the season, upcoming 2022-2023 season. Um, we want to talk about um, roughly about two, three weeks before the coming uh, December round contest. How do you um, better warm up so that your students can best prepare and join the contest. So today's topic is how USCO can help students in high school and also in college to prepare for college application and also for job interview. Uh, we're going to talk about three uh, topics here, uh, three parts. Um, first part is to review the USCO contest. Um, actually, many of you should be able to read the um, English and also Chinese, so actually some of them are in Chinese. Um, that's review, and many of you may have um, known that one. So just briefly review that one. And the second part is how USCO can help the college uh, application. The third part is how USCO can help the job interview if you're a student um, later want to find a job for a STEM related um, fields. All right, the first part, USCO contest. Uh, some of you may know it, some of you may not be familiar. So here we're gonna just briefly review. So USCO stands for USA Computing Olympiad. Um, in Chinese, this would be the Olympic uh, But some would have a different name because um, some um, countries may use the information so um, for international Olympiad, for um, information context is actually IOI, International Olympiad of Informatics. So this contest focuses on the um, design of algorithms and also how you implement them. So it's not about the language, how you design um, your language, how you uh, talk about the features of the language, that's the linguistics. It's not about say um, the graphics, not for animation, for movies. Actually, there's no such uh, Olympiad for that one. Normally that would take much longer time to do it. Um, it's not about say database, how you build a database so that it can uh, help the process of to uh, input the data, how you maintain the data so that you can retrieve the data um, in the most efficient way. So um, use code will be just one part of computer science focusing on the um, computing part. So there are four levels for the USCO contests. Everybody starts from bronze level. And then once a student gets uh, promoted, it will be the silver level and then get promoted to gold level and also further to platinum level. Among the top students um, each year, 24 of them would be invited to join the summer camp so 24, about 24 students every year are invited to the summer camp, training camp. Um, and out of the 24, uh, after the training camp, four would be chosen to um, form the Team USA to participate in uh, the international competition, the International Olympiad of Informatics, IOI. Um, for USCO, there are four rounds every season. Okay, this is just for USCO. IOI is the same for every country, but USCO, uh, we're gonna have four levels here and also the four rounds each season. 
And if you actually look at the neighbor in the north in Canada, actually, they don't have the four levels. They also don't have the four rounds per season. So this is just uh, for USCO. If you just try to do the uh, uh, inform Olympiad of Informatics, each country has different um, format. The four rounds, as I said, right, the first one is actually started in December. This would be the mid of December. Normally after the school ends, right before the Christmas weekend. The next round would be January, and then the next one would be uh, February. And then the last one is called the US Open Round. This could be the end of March or sometimes could be the beginning of April. The first three rounds, each student would be given four hours to solve three questions. In the last round, US Open Round, every student has five hours to solve three questions. So a little bit different from most other Olympiad uh, contests where students may have to solve maybe uh, 25 questions, for example, at math, physics, and in a much shorter time, 75 minutes. So here would be closer to the IMO style, the International Math Olympiad, where students spend four and a half hours to solve three questions. So here, um, students have to stay longer. So it is a um, combination where the students have to think fast, to work fast, and also have to be strong physically. Right? If uh, your student cannot sustain, say, four hours, five hours of uh, you know very hard work, then that would be an issue. So that would be um, to help you um, help your students right to have a strong body. Um, here um, we're going to have. Um, the statistic in the past seven seasons, including this um, season 2022, this is the number of the students got promoted from gold to platinum, gold to platinum. So season 2016, that's the first season where platinum was added to the contest before we only had bronze, silver and gold. So in the first two years, actually, uh, we see the most number of students got promoted to platinum. So in those two years, actually, the questions were considered easier using the standard uh, now. Because now it's right, the number of promotions, right, actually got uh, smaller. Um, season 2022, actually, we only had about 90 students got promoted. Okay, um, I just want to show here, maybe last time you have uh, seen the slide, the promotion rate actually um, these two years that's about 11 percent among all the students in the gold level 11 percent of students got promoted to platinum and in the next uh, four seasons the ratio is about five percent season 2022 is about 3.5 percent so this is actually the lowest um, ratio and also the lowest in absolute number for the promotion. Why well, I want to point out, uh, point out the platinum. Uh, many of you have um, thought about, right? The number is actually very small, right? Every year, uh, except season 2017, all other years, right? Less than 200 students got promoted to platinum level. So it is true that it is uh, very rare to get the promotion. Um, so many students, and many family um, parents, I think, right? Um, if my students got into the plant division, then I should have um, the great advantage for the college application process. That is true. Uh, actually, I would say um, for all the female students, when they got the plant division or the title, then so far we have not seen any uh, exception that did not get into the dream college they want. But for uh, boys, that's not the case. Of course, right, if your student got into the training camp, the summer camp, then that's a different story. Then um, that's, um, again, we don't see any exception. Well, anyway, right, every year there are only 24 students uh, were invited to the training camp. So nationwide, right, that's nation tw uh, top 24. But still, every year, right, only about 
200 or less than 200 students can get into the plant division. So um, it is still very rare. So even though um, we cannot say for, um, you know, with high confidence, say 99% or 95%, right? I would say still very high confidence that it can help the college application process. Actually, uh, in a moment, we're gonna talk about that one, uh, compare the use of coverage and also the computer science uh, classes offered in top universities. You can see, yeah, this actually, this will help your students to do better in college. And that also would be a factor in the application process, in the admission process. All right, um, next. This is actually the coverage for the four levels. Gold, we're gonna cover these, um, the basic programming tools and also the skills. This actually is um, getting more attention before in the um, season 2016, 17, 18, right? The, First several years after plant was added to the contest, actually, um, this was not that important. As long as the student knows how to do the basic programming, well, to be fluent, right? Then very likely your student can get the promotion from bronze to silver. But that's not the case anymore. Now the programming skills, actually quite some of the uh, skills need a lot of practice to get the first promotion to silver. And we have added this to the new curriculum. Silver to code, you're going to know the basic data structures. Actually, now we're going to have a brief introduction in the bronze level toward the end. But at silver level, we're going to be ask every student to be familiar with the common data structures and also the associated algorithms. Go to platinum, we're going to have the uh, graph theory and some of the fancy complicated data structures and also the algorithms. And from plant to camp, then we're going to emphasize more in discrete math uh, and also the um, more advanced graph theory. Okay, you're gonna check the coverage of these classes, the, um, these tests, right? And also the um, curriculum that you might find in top universities and the colleges. Actually, I'm going to see um, here I have three um, samples here, one from MIT, one from uh, Princeton, one from Conic Manon. OK, um, I have um, copied the information from the website. This is from MIT Computer Science. This is the introduction to algorithms. And this is actually what we're taught, teaching to students at the bronze level and silver level. Math. For computer science, actually this, we're going to uh, emerge. We're gonna make it self-contained that's in the gold level and also the plat level. For bronze and silver, we don't need much math. When the students know the basic algebra, algebra one, algebra two, and the geometry, that's normally enough. Uh, but we do emphasize a lot um, in combinatorics, uh, the counting probability when students working on gold and a plat level. And here, this would be more on the, um, the philosophy. For example, right, divide and conquer, that's a very important tool that we're gonna emphasize because it does appear in many of the algorithms, design and also implementation. So we have listed only three here, the same um, for Princeton, algorithms and the data structure. We emphasize data structure, graph theory. This actually would be important if your student wants to do well at goal level and also plat level. This is one application, algorithms for computational biology. Um, here, I want to uh, say a few things. Um, many say the math Olympiad is important, but the tools um, you have learned, the skills you have practiced, for the math Olympiad training, right? Actually probably will not be very useful for uh, college uh, studies and also for future um, job or research. But this is actually a different story for training in your school. What the students have learned or trained in the process actually would be useful here for computational biology. This is just one example. Actually all those tools you have learned would be very useful here. Anyway, uh, many of us know computational biology, one uh, feature is the big data. So that's exactly what USCO is uh, trying to focus. When we 
are presented with a lot of data and we want to solve this one in a shorter time. We don't want to wait to say for a month, wait for a year, rather we want to say, can you finish the calculation? Give me some result, right? Maybe uh, in one hour more, even more um, ambitious. Can you finish this one within a minute? Or even say, when I hit the enter button, can you give me the result? So this is actually very useful for computation, computational biology, also the same in chemistry and other fields. This is one application for machine learning at Carnegie Mellon on this question. Um, let me uh, talk about a little bit here uh, for the rating. Okay, give me one second there. Um, this is one example for machine learning. This is actually for a math program. Uh, you can check the details at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, there are core courses. You have to know the machine learning and many of them you're going to involve the algorithms. And then these are the elective uh, courses, again, will be involved uh, surrounding the algorithms, the design and also implementation with the emphasis on the learning part. Normally right for machine learning, we are presented, we're given a huge amount of data and we try to find out the pattern, find out the underlying mechanisms. So, uh, big data is the common feature for all these applications. Okay, here I just want to show right, um, what we're learning here, training here in USCO actually would be useful, not only for college uh, studies and also for um, later the interview. And here would be um, just one example. Uh, the top three textbooks for college algorithms and related classes, this would be the, um, you certainly will learn. Actually, this book by Coleman. Uh, actually, when I was in a PhD program, I used this book. That's for the PhD level algorithm uh, course. Um, we would cover about one third of the content in this book. By the way, this book has over 1,000 pages. Actually, sometimes um, we would uh, get questions from parents saying, okay, um, my son or my daughter, right, is say uh, seventh grade, eighth grade, and then where should you uh, suggest to get started? Okay, I still remember um, there was one year, uh, a mom took her son, a sixth grader, to the classroom and holding this book, the physical book, and asked me, uh, Ms. Min, which um, chapter, where do you suggest we should get started? So I was actually uh, very impressed. So uh, I said, right, we cover about one third of the content of this book. And in the typical um, college level class for introduction to algorithms, actually only about one half of the content will be um, covered in a typical um, semester. Uh, our division, a difference between the two, right? We cover a lot, uh, a little bit less. For example, we don't cover about the, uh, say, Turing machine, the theory. And also we don't cover about, say, the MP and P. Um, how do we talk about, say, P, uh, questions in the P category and also questions in the NP category? Why we don't talk about MP? Well, most of the questions in NP categories cannot be solved in real time. Here in USCO, every question has to be finished in, I mean, every test case, right? We have to finish in two seconds if we use C++ and four seconds in Java or Python. So if a question is MP, normally we cannot finish in this short period of time. That's why all the questions in USCO and also the college level ICPC were not fall into the category of MP. Even though we don't know whether P is equal to MP, so mostly our questions that can be solved in the short time, right, would fall into the category of P. Actually, sometimes would be even more strict. We're not happy with, say, uh, N cubed, N squared. We're going to strive to, uh, say, N log M. Okay, many parents and many students know this one. That's the, um, if you say uh, use, right, only one focus, that is efficiency. How can you make it faster and faster? So the less number of time, the better. Okay, um, just want to show you, right? So um, many uh, admission process, they do uh, view this one as an important um, indicator 
So if you can do well in the USCO process, then it shows that you will do well in all the algorithm classes, not in the introductory level, that's right. This normally would be used for the high level undergraduate courses, right? Normally would be say 400 to 500 levels and also can be used at the graduate level um, class. So if you can do well, say I have been trained here, then very likely, right, you can show, yeah, you can do well in college. So that is a plus for the admission process. Uh, the second, uh, the third part, I'm gonna say uh, USCO would be useful is for the job interview. Actually, um, I want to uh, emphasize more. Uh, on one hand, right, not every student can be promoted to platinum level. Anyway, every year, right, we have less than 200 students less nationwide who can get the honor to um, the plant division. So for other students, then do we say the training, the effort, the time right spent in USCO, is that lost or is it waste? Actually, it's not. Actually, if you put your eyesight right a little bit further, not just in the college application process, rather say after four years in college, if your student chooses uh, STEM as the major, right? How can your student uh, get a good job interview opportunity? So actually this is what we're going to talk about more today. Um, since um, most of the students, as I mentioned last time, right? Would spend maybe year, year and a half to get promoted to silver. And year and a half to two years to um, gold, go to platinum, that could be even longer, right? Two years, normal, 2.5 years, that's also uh, normal. So um, of course your student will start earlier. That's what we would recommend. Start um, say bronze level, maybe seventh grade, eighth grade before uh, high school. And then um, your student may have more time to get the promotion to gold or platinum. So more importantly, we're gonna say, right, the training here at gold level or even silver level actually would be very useful. Okay, I'm gonna talk about it in a moment, but I'm gonna say a typical interview process here, if you want to apply for say uh, the big companies, right? Amazon, uh, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, Apple, um, these big companies, actually, I do have a list of these top companies. The process would be similar. So there will be online assessment and also the phone screening. So these would, um, you would not have to go travel. But after this, if your student right got uh, selected, passed the first two steps, then the on-site interview normally we're going to have four to six uh, interviews for on-site, talk with the people actually doing the extra job. Each interview lasts about 45 minutes to 65, uh, 60 minutes. And then each um, question, you're gonna to talk to the people actually doing the job, right? Actually three to four about um, like the majority of the questions actually involve or include coding questions. And the style actually is very similar to USCO questions. Okay, I want to show here a little bit different. Um, for the job interview questions, each question, you have about 45 to 60 minutes. For USCO, if you remember right, I said uh, each student has four hours, three questions. So that is an average one hour and 20 minutes. So an average 80 minutes. So that is longer. So that's why actually the training in USCO actually would be a little bit more advanced than the typical USCO. I mean, the uh, interview uh, requirement. Here you have less time, 45 to 60 minutes. For USCO, that's about 80 minutes on average. Okay, so that means um, in the subsequent slides, you're gonna see, right, sometimes the questions for USCO training actually would be harder. It is true. The typical questions that uh, your student will see, will encounter in, in the interview process who actually would be a, at the level for USCO silver and maybe uh, in entry level of the gold uh, questions, okay? Um, these are the companies that I just got from this website, Lead Code. Many of um, parents have known this website. Um, 
it is a uh, website right pretty much everybody if um, you want to find a job uh, for these big high-tech companies right able to go through um, the Chinese right is uh, translated into Li Ko. And then there are English version and also the Chinese version. Actually, um, there is a also an industry, people trying to study, spending um, one month to six months, how to uh, solve questions of the style uh, to prepare for the interviews. So here, I just got the names. Actually, you can get the uh, information from the lead code website. Uh, pretty much all the big companies um, you know, right, will be in the um, list. Um, these names, actually, they are listed by the um, how many questions that have appeared in the code. So Amazon actually is number one, and then the Google, and then Microsoft, Facebook, and so on. And not just high tech, actually, this one is actually uh, amazing, right? That's for the, um, the bank, the investment banks. Of course, they would also love to see the talent for high uh, performance and for fast computing. Okay, and then topics covered by these interview problems, right? Um, you don't have to know all the details, uh, but see the name of these, uh, the topics, right? If you see the name, actually they're very similar to what we uh, did in the, uh, the slide here. I put, it would be the same as this one here. Well, except here I use the Chinese and in a more simple way. And here we use English. Some of them would be in, um, most of them would be in the silver level uh, from bronze, silver. And some of them actually, uh, we only cover in um, gold level actually, right? For this one, DP. DP I, in our new curriculum, actually it would take one third of the gold um, training. Why? Because one third of the questions in the past seven seasons, uh, gold contest actually are DP, dynamic programming. So this is a uh, very important part. But of course, right, DP actually only accounts for a small po uh, portion or percentage for the job interview because these questions are considered to be harder ones. But do we do uh, see a lot of the, um, say, uh, we do have the binary search. This is a common technique that we're going to, uh, it will appear in, not only say in uh, gold level, but also appear frequently in silver level and also uh, plant level. It is actually a very common feature as I mentioned here before. Um, I think this one, we do have the uh, divide and conquer. So that is a very typical um, application of the divide and conquer. That's very important to philosophy. Okay. Next. Um, all right, so here I'm going to show um, two questions, two examples, how a question that would be similar in USCO and also in uh, the interview process. So this is one example here. Example one, you don't have to know how to solve it. I'll just explain the question. So uh, in this question, we're given N cows. Well, USCO. Uh, the questions always involve Farmer Zhang, Long Fu Yuhang, and his cows. Um, we have N cows. Each cow is in a distinct position on the 2D plane. Now we're going to partition the cows into four regions using the two lines, one horizontal and one uh, vertical. You have the freedom to choose the A and B here. The point is, how do you partition the N cows into the four regions so that the counts in the four regions would be as close as possible? So that means, right, it's balanced. Okay, uh, I know, right, many parents know how to solve this one, many maybe uh, don't, that's okay, don't worry. But don't think, right, this is a simple question, right? Uh, I tried this one too many um, people, not in the computer science field, right? Okay, because this one is actually not a hard question to, uh, to describe. Okay, some questions will be hard. This one actually is not, right? Uh, this sometimes do have the, um, does have the importance, right? You want to say uh, partition to make them balanced, right? This could be a workload. You want to say there are four people, each one will work the, roughly the same amount of work, um, job, right, task. 
that's a very legitimate question. Okay, so again, we're gonna say, uh, find out the X coordinates, right? And then find the midpoint and choose, consider the Y coordinates and also find out the midpoint or in um, uh, the jargon, we're gonna say find the median. That is, we're gonna find out the value that is half of the points would be on the left of uh, this vertical line, half of the points that would be on the right side of the uh, vertical line, the same thing, half of the points for the above the horizontal line and half of the points below this horizontal line. And that should be the answer. Actually, it may not be the case. This is just count example. Suppose the points, right, would be somehow like this. So half below you would put here, half up here, right? Half to the left, half to the right. So you can say, right, five points here, five points here, zero and here, zero here. So. Uh, they're not as balanced as possible. Why? You can move this nine, right? Move this one here and move this one here. Now the, uh, the, not, the biggest one is actually not five. The biggest one is four. This is three, that's three, that's zero, right? So here, four, three, three, zero is more balanced than five, five, zero, zero. Okay, right? Even this, right? All the students, even I talk to students, right? Uh, at entry level, bronze, or even introduction to computing can understand this idea. So five is not the best answer. Actually, for this question, the answer should be four. Okay, so how do you solve this one? We have different levels. So if N is at most 100, this is actually the bronze level uh, useful question. So we all know we're gonna say, not check all the points here for every possibility for this vertical 9A and for every possibility for every value B. We don't try that one. That would be too expensive or um, too slow. Actually, we're gonna examine the intervals Right, notice here, uh, this is actually our uh, training. Because if you change the value, right, put the A between the two cows here. If there is no cow between them, you don't have to check all, just check one value is enough. The count would be this, would not change if you um, move this nine to the left or the right, right, before you hit this uh, cow here, before you hit this cow here, right? The counts would not change. So you don't have to try all the vertical nines. Actually, only try one value for each interval decided by the x coordinates. So that is actually a brute force idea for bronze. Say, uh, well, good, okay. Now when n goes bigger, okay, normally that's the, um, the case. When n is small, the amount of the calculation right will be smaller. When n, can, n gets bigger, there will be more calculation and then it will take more time. Then you have to uh, use a different idea. This is a perfect example actually I use in my uh, teaching. When n goes to 3000, actually we're going to use a technique called two pointers. Or sometimes we uh, refer as a double indexing. And we're going to, um, another technique where you can solve this one is prefix sum, also would be a very common one. So this is the useful silver level. Okay, some of you right know the technique right away. Say, try this one. Think about it, how you solve this one. Okay, and then when n goes to say hundred thousand, n goes to hundred thousand. So this time you cannot use the you know just check examine the intervals brute force way or using the techniques here. Actually, you have to do um, binary search and also the BIT the um, binary indexed tree, or you can use a segment tree that is at the gold level. And actually um, there was a question earlier before, how do you rate the question? I'm gonna give you uh, one idea here. This is another example. Uh, it does appear in uh, lead code. Here actually is lead code question 274. It's called about uh, asking for H index. Okay, I don't want to go through the uh, the details here, right? You can read this one here. This question actually appeared 
roughly the same uh, description also appeared for USCO. That's USCO 2021. Um, I think that is um, US Open Round, where N actually goes to 100,000 here, and N is going, uh, it's at most 5,000 for um, lead code. And this one is classified as medium, the difficult level, easy, medium, and hard. Okay. I want to give you the um, an idea. So for medium, questions at lead code for USCO, actually N is even bigger. And this one is only in the bronze level. So I want to show here um, for the hard lead code questions for job interview, normally would be in the silver level of USCO and sometimes would be uh, advanced silver and also entry level gold. So they would be a little bit easier than the USCO. And there was a question asked uh, earlier, uh, what is the rating for USCO and also the um, code of force? Um, I would say, if you want to get started, code of force, the rate would be 1200, 1300 level. Silver, you're gonna go 1500, 1600. Gold level and code forces, you're going to start 2000 at least. 21, 2200 would be normal. Um, and then if you want to go uh, even higher, then that's for plant and even beyond. But for code forces, I want to um, give you the um, caution, right? Code forces uh, would be more appropriate for high level. So when you get started, um, maybe you should still um, try USCO website, usco.com org usco.guide and when your student gets more advanced gold level and a platinum level then try to use uh, code forces or spend more time at code forces otherwise your students may get discouraged at the beginning we need to nurture the um, curiosity we want to develop the passion to work in this one okay so i just want to um emphasize here right today if are you can take one message home is the training, the effort, the time spent for USCO actually would be useful later for a uh, job interview. Even though your student right, uh, may not have time to get promotion to uh, gold, plant, still would be very useful. Actually, um, from our experience, all the students um, with the USCO training, especially when they have obtained say gold title or plant title, it will be very helpful for the um, summer internship in college and also job interview. So far, all our students with the um, experience, they reported uh, easy and happy experience when they talk to the um, interviewer and also obtain the um, dream jobs or the uh, dream positions. Okay. Um, and for the uh, momentum um, useful training, uh, this is the website here, momentumlearning.org slash online coding summer camps. And you can also get it from the website at this uh, menu here, 2022 summer, uh, drop the menu here and online and choose coding. And that will give you the information. The, um, we're going to offer eight camps here, two for Java, four for bronze, and then bronze one will be repeated. And then uh, bronze two also will be repeated here. Uh, one is on site. Bronze one on site here, bronze two on site here. Java introduction, this one is on site. Uh, we're gonna offer the mixture. Um, your student can come to the uh, classroom, can also stay at home. Uh, it's uh, flexible. And a silver, we're gonna off offer the silver one and two. Um, you still have the um, time to uh, register for the classes. Uh, we're gonna start, the first one will be June 13th. All right, okay. And also uh, one more thing, uh, we hear this a lot from parents saying, how do we know the level that is appropriate for my student to uh, consider? There is the entrance assessment. For every level, we do have the assessment. So um, ask a student to um, 
work on the question given the uh, time without interruption and then the levels we have specified here. You can also use the um, any past contest. That one you're going to ask uh, your student to work on four hours or five hours and finally get the score. And then based on the score, you can decide what level would be most appropriate. Okay, and also here, uh, contact again, as I sh showed at the beginning, right? Um, for any question, please uh, contact our front desk here and also um, Ted here, Mr. Tsai. He would be very happy to help you uh, to answer all your questions. Okay, um, I do have the time to answer questions here about the um, class, about the, um, the curriculum. And um, if you want to stay here, you're welcome to ask me and I'll ask. Address the questions one by one. I don't know. Ah. I don't care. So you will I I do have the uh, the first question. Um, summer Java still open? Yes. Um, the summer Java uh, Java class it's still open. Uh, you can take either one. That's actually um, oh there was only one session for Java one and uh, I'm sorry. Both would be Java one session. There will be repeat. That's the introduction to Java and it's still open. Okay, good. Um, the second question. Um, oh, the rating I have just answered. Um, what is the corresponding for code force rating and also for the, um, the use code level, right? I've just explained, so hopefully that's fine. Um, the next question, um, can we take two, uh, bronze one? Yes, you can actually, um, if your student, right, wants to have more experience for the training, actually, um, he or she can take two sessions of say bronze two, the bronze two actually we're going to, um, bronze two here, they're going to have different, um, questions, the training sets would be different. The um, coverage would be the same. Of course, right, uh, bronze one would be, uh, bronze two would be more advanced than bronze one. So it would be more intensive, um, but you can, your student, right, if um, he or she wants to further um, improve the coding uh, skills, debugging skills, uh, welcome to do that one, that's fine. Uh, there is next one here, the graph theory. Um, actually, we don't mind any graph theory book. Um, actually, this will be a little bit different from the college class. Um, we will just get the, um, the typical, for example, we're gonna do the connectivity. We're gonna do graph traversal, the uh, breadth first, the depth first traversal. We're gonna have say topological traversal. Um, and we're also going to have the, uh, say, shortest path. But we're not going to talk about, say, the MP questions. So for all the books, textbook, right, if they talk about graph theory, they must cover that part. But that big part, right, we're not going to use it for use code. So um, to answer your question, what, graph, what textbook and graph theory would it be useful? Actually, anyone would be fine because we'll only cover that part that is uh, used for USCO. The uh, more than half of the content actually we're not going to cover for USCO training. Hope that answers your question. Uh, why not Java 2 in summer? Um, Ted, can you answer here? Uh, is it Java session one, Java session two actually are both for Java one? Okay, uh, Ted answered right. Uh, it is actually um, both sessions are for Java one. And also uh, the slides, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the PDF would be actually available at the website. Um, momentumnoning.org slash open house. Um, 
the classes, um, if it is, uh, there is a stock here, right? That means uh, on, uh, on site in person is available. If it's, there's no star, there's no asterisk, that means it is only available for online. And we're going to uh, um, provide the TA for uh, on-site and also the online sessions. Um, all students in um, the classroom on-site, actually they're going to sit in one room and the TA will be there. And then another TA actually will uh, help the online students. I will be in a different room. All right, hope uh, that answers your question for the on-site and online classes. Uh, another question, um, how do you boost the confidence for the students? Well, actually this actually would be, um, it varies from student to student. Um, but I do recommend for parents, um, if you have the time uh, in the summer, uh, this is actually what I would recommend uh, to students. Find a week or two so that your student can focus on this one. That means uh, every day um, your student can work maybe four hours, six hours uh, intensively. And especially for hard uh, questions, right? Either coming up with the ideas or implementing the idea. And especially during the debugging process, this takes time. Everybody has to go through the stage, especially for the higher level gold plan. Uh, your student has to be very good at programming and very good at debugging. Otherwise, if the idea is good, excellent idea, but if the debugging takes about say an hour, then um, maybe still cannot get the credit. So the summer would be a perfect um, time to provide the one week or two week, just train in uh, extensively, intensively, so that uh, your student will feel the improvement because um, after that, uh, you know, the feeling, right? He or she would be confident. Okay, I have this question. I know the category and then I have the idea and then I'm pretty sure I can finish the coding or I can have a working night uh, program in, then, uh, in say 10, 15 minutes. That is what we want to do. Actually for all the gold level and plat level students, especially toward the end, uh, uh, you know, the advanced levels, right? We want students to have the confidence. I have the idea um, and just wait for 10 minutes, I'll give you the code. So that's what we try to um, achieve. And once they have the feeling, they have the confidence, please keep that one. That means, right, every week they still have to practice regularly as they practice for say, um, violin, practice for tennis, for swimming and so on. They need to keep the uh, practice on daily basis. Uh, another question here. Um, another question asks for the uh, language. Um, here, our um, choice for language would be um, the introduction we're going to do in Java. And then for all the subsequent um, use school training, bronze, silver, gold, we're going to do both the Java and C++. And here we're not going to um, try Python. Uh, I think we talked about this uh, question before, maybe uh, in the first series this year. Uh, Python is actually used a lot, especially in machine, uh, machine learning, but still it's not very popular in uh, USCO and also ICPC, the college level computing Olympiad, just because sometimes it's still uh, slower than Java, but it does not have the, um, say the time advantage. Java is slower than C++, but does have twice amount of time. Python is slower than Java, but does not have twice amount of time. So we still think Java is better. Um, and I, for students later, I try, try to do the um, programming. Actually, it's not important. Actually for us, after they have been promoted to silver and gold, actually they should be able to do any uh, code, the program right in any language. 
maybe at the beginning they're not so familiar, so fluent, but gradually, maybe in say a month or two, then they're going to switch very um, you know, easily to a new language. As long as the language has the full capacity, it is a full um, purpose, or I mean general purpose of programming language. Uh, some actually does ask, right, what about the JavaScript? My student has done the programming in JavaScript. Can she or she um, use that language to do the use code programming? Uh, actually, it's not because JavaScript is not a general purpose language. So you can do Java, you can do C++, you can do Python, all these are fine. Even Pascal, C, all those are fine, but they are not, uh, they're not allowed for the IOI. So now we're not going to use them anymore. So mainly we're gonna use just uh, Java and C++. Already. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to ask uh, answer the last question. Um, uh, Nina's question: uh, Gold class, the concept, but does not know how to use it. Hmm. That is actually um, what we recommend. A lot of practice, and also have to. Um, Everyone has to practice um, in a serious manner, not just say, okay, I know the idea and I'm, okay, I'm going to um, pass. If you do this one in math, that's okay. Once you have the idea, next time you spread, okay, I have, I seen this big uh, question before, I used this technique before, I know how to solve it. But for use code, that's different. You have to spend the effort to actually put the idea to code. And sometimes, you have to do this one maybe not just once, twice, three times. So um, uh, Nina, just ask uh, your son right to contact me for um, the practice and also for the possible TA, um, TA for the, um, the season 2023. Uh, we are accepting the applications for the TA positions. Uh, basically this, uh, by the way, that's uh, a paid uh, position is not a volunteer. Actually, we pay about um, five hundred dollars for one semester, the twelve week, twenty four hour um, TA position. So it is actually helpful for students in the application package. Actually, many of our students have said uh, this actually helped them. So we want to um, keep the tradition. Um, Many parents, I said, okay, you gave the kids too much. Uh, we say, yeah, this is helpful. We want to encourage the students because compared to what they're going to do um, after college, this is actually nothing. So this actually, the $500 right per semester actually is far more than other jobs they would apply. Uh, I know, right, uh, students can apply for jobs at McDonald's. That is um, not so fun. This one is more interesting. So we want to encourage students to achieve um, the experience and also try to practice how they explain the ideas to the fellow students. So uh, we love that one and we are happy to help the students. All right, um, that's all for today. And um, if you have further questions, uh, please contact um, Momentum at the uh, levels right at the different ways phone, email, and um, the WeChat. And um, if we cannot answer your question, uh, please also uh, feel free to tell us, right? How can we do better to help you? So, um, using the um, sentence I have learned here and I love it, right? Please help us to help you. All right, with this, we're going to stop here. Thank you guys. Bye.